Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu Welcome to Newsroom. I'm your host, Mr. Khalid. But today is the 18th of April 2024, and these are the stories that we will be highlighting during the course of the show. We'll begin with the day 195 of the Israel Palestine tensions, the uh, genocide, the ethnic cleansing, uh, the war crimes that have been going on on the Palestinian people by the Israeli authorities and the Israeli army. In the latest uh, scourge of attacks, at least 11 people, including five children, have been killed. It's 1.5 million displaced Palestinians fear an imminent uh, ground invasion in uh, Rafah. At the same time, the number of casualties has increased now to 33,970, almost 34,000 since uh, the, uh, the, this conflict began on the 7th of October last year, whereas the injured have surpassed 76,770. Just in the last 24 hours, 56 Palestinians have been killed, 89 injured. At the same time, uh, we all know that uh, Iran uh, struck uh, uh, Israel through a, a hordes of uh, drones and missiles. Although it did not make any impact as far as uh, uh, the, the loss of human life is concerned, but that was what the intention of Iran was to uh, send a message to Israel. What the, will be the message that Israel will send to Iran is the question that everybody has on their minds. At the United Nations Security Council as well, there have been a lot of uh, remarks by important countries as far as Israeli response is concerned. And many countries are uh, asking Israel to uh, clamp down on its response as far as uh, Iran is concerned. Whether they do it or not is another question all uh, together. The United Nations Security Council is also going to vote tomorrow on a Palestinian request for its full United Nations membership, a move that the U.S. Israel's staunch seller is expected to block. That and more will be discussed in our first segment. Our second story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns the Indian elections that are going to begin starting from tomorrow in India. 1.4 billion people are going to vote for the future of uh, their country. Uh, uh, due to its uh, geography, the voting is not going to be held on a single day, but is instead split into seven phases across different states, which is going to last at least six weeks in total. At the same time, a lot of question marks are also emanating on the way the, the Modi government is uh, um, maneuvering in order to not only uh, highlight its own importance uh, to the Indian public, but also uh, demoralize the uh, opposition, whereas uh, through different tactics like putting them in jail or suspending their uh, accounts and uh, any uh, aid whatsoever that they could get directly or indirectly in order to um, uh, you know, uh, participate in the elections and as well uh, as uh, you know, tainting the opposition uh, through different tactics uh, through uh, the, election, uh, the ED or uh, through their own different organizations. Uh, the Indian maneuvering has been going on, going on since quite some time. At the same time, many of the states in India are also extremely wary on what will happen if and when the, Neri, uh, the Narendra Modi government comes into power. Uh, areas like Manipur, uh, areas like uh, an illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and so many other states, uh, wherein uh, uh, the uh, Narendra Modi government has shown its uh, uh, belligerent attitude towards the minority especially towards the Muslims. Will this attitude continue? It seems so. But uh, what will happen in the elections is a question on everybody's uh, mind because uh, the Indian Narendra Modi government or the BJP or uh, uh, the current government in power India is doing whatever it can to sustain its power uh, in these elections as well and to come back for a third time. Whether it comes will uh, be something that we will all uh, wait and see. Next, we'll be talking about uh, uh, deluge that has battered the UAE and Oman. At least 22 people have uh, lost their lives as a result of that. 21 in, uh, uh, in Oman alone and two are missing there, whereas in Dubai, one person has lost uh, uh, his life. On the same way, we can see as in the visuals, uh, the airports, all the other uh, uh, areas in uh, the UAE, Dubai, were also submerged in water, although uh, the rains are seen now and then in uh, the UAE, but not to this extent. A lot of people are uh, pointing towards climate change as one of the major uh, reasons behind it. Next, we'll be talking about a volcano that has erupted in Indonesia several times in the outermost region on Wednesday. Authorities have raised the alert level to the highest point after the dome spewed a column of smoke more than a mile into the sky and a forced hundreds to evacuate. This happened at the Mount Ruang. It is in the uh, North uh, Sulawesi province. Next, uh, we are going to talk about the Brazilian police that has detained a woman for uh, taking a dead man uh, to a bank to withdraw a loan. This video uh, became viral on many of the social media uh, platforms in which this uh, woman is trying to uh, uh, ask uh, her uh, 
at the time dead uncle to sign a, a paper requesting for almost three thousand dollars loan uh, they say the woman's family say that they did not know and the person must have passed away while he was in the bank but the authorities are claiming that uh, the uh, person was already dead when he was brought to the bank now the, uh, nevertheless uh, of course an investigation has begun and let's see what happens as a result of that investigation let's begin with our first story and that concerns escalating middle east uh, tensions and of course because of the iran uh, israel uh, you know um, conflict and how iran uh, has uh, aggravated that through the uh, the deluge of uh, bombs and uh, missiles as well as drones uh, that uh, uh, were struck towards israel uh, now no concrete damage was done but of course a message was sent now uh, all are uh, all eyes are on israel on how it's going to react whether it be the United States Security Council, whether it be other important countries, they are all asking Israel to clamp down its response. We've been joined by two guests. Let me introduce them to you one by one in the studios. We've been joined by Naveed Aman Khan. He's a senior analyst. Thank you very much, Naveed Sahib, to have joined us. And online, we've been joined by Dr. Khuram Abbas. He's an international affairs expert. Khuram, thank you very much to have joined us as well uh, for this important segment. Let's begin with you, Naveed Sahib. The US, Israel, and 46 other countries issue a joint statement condemning Iran's large-scale attack last Saturday. This, uh, uh, EU leaders have also agreed to impose new sanctions on Iran's drones and missile uh, producers over its attack on Israel. Israeli foreign minister has called on 32 countries to impose sanctions on Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps and their missile program. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen also warns of further sanctions targeting Iran. She ex says she expects Washington will take added action in the coming days. What kind of sanctions are we looking at as far as Iran is concerned? And what impact will it have on Iran? Well, in fact, uh, Iran has long been facing sanctions already imposed by the UN, the European Union, and America. Uh, for the last four decades, um, Iran has been facing all this. But since the imposition of those sanctions, Iran has been making um, I mean, a very significant progress uh, development in, in in the country. Uh, those sanctions could not damage Iran as the uh, UN or America or the EU uh, have been, uh, been planning. Now, uh, when uh, Israel attacked uh, uh, Iranian consulate in Damascus, uh, it was not uh, initiated or provoked by Iran. It was provoked by, it, by Israel itself. Mm. That was initiated by Israel and backed by America and West. Uh, no, none of the countries, America or EU or the other countries or uh, European Un uh, 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 United Nations uh, condemned that attack or t taken uh, Israel to task regarding that attack on uh, Iranian consulate in uh, Damascus. Now, when Iran uh, responded it, uh, by attacking on uh, Israeli soil, uh, all these countries have once again come out and have uh, um, shown their support and uh, solidarity with Iran, uh, with Israel, which is, I think, uh, unjustified. It doesn't make any sense. When Israel attacks, nobody comes in favor of uh, Iran. It is, a, it, 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 is it, it should not be appreciated. Well, even for Palestine, uh, since October 7, we've seen the number of casualties, uh, but what kind of action has been taken against Israel? Same, same attitude against Palestine and Israel uh, and uh, uh, Iran. Uh, when Israel uh, is, uh, uh, Israel faces that respond, uh, response from Iran, now once again the uh, uh, American authorities and the European Union and uh, uh, different countries of uh, 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 that uh, uh, of Europe has once again started uh, standing with the uh, uh, Israel and has shown that concern that they, they will retaliate and they will uh, impose sanctions on Iran or the sanctions should be imposed on Iran. But I think, I'm sure, th those sanctions will not be imposed on Iran because it, they, all, they already they, they don't afford it. The, imp the imposing uh, countries, they also they don't afford it any longer. Iran uh, uh, will retaliate in a different way if the sanctions are imposed. So that retaliation will really damage their interests in the mm. in, in in the entire world. So I don't think they will go for it. They are just I um, mean uh, warning Iran or uh, uh, threatening Iran to just keep keep quiet. Uh, 
uh, but I think the uh, uh, any uh, response, another uh, new response from Israel will uh, play very very devastating role in the Middle East mm -hmm. and will create another uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, destabilization or uh, uh, anarchy in in the Gulf region. I don't think that uh, uh, it will be a very wise decision to once again uh, respond Iranian attack. Iran, mm -hmm. Iranian attack was very calculated, very wisely uh, I mean, uh, 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 articulated, and it did not even uh, take life of any of the Israelis. If it had taken life of any Israeli, what would have been the impact of Israel, America, and uh, uh, the allied countries against Iran? Uh, the only uh, um, purpose of that attack from Iran was just to teach lesson to Israel, America, and uh, uh, the allied countries mm. like Great Britain. Right. Not to provoke Iran any longer, any way, uh, uh, in, the pa in, in, in future. All right, to provoke Israel, basically. Yes. All right, uh, Khuram, I'd like to understand your perspective. Do you feel that the response from the Israeli side will be also as calculated as the Iranian response was, or is it going to be more aggressive in nature? Also, coming to uh, the way the whole conflict uh, has been um, you know, accentuated or highlighted in different media. I'd like to refer to what the uh, New York Times has done as per a very recent report by Intercept. It says it instructed journalists covering Israel's war on the Gaza Strip to restrict the use of terms genocide, ethnic cleansing, and avoid using the phrase occupied territory when describing Palestinian land. And this is as per a copy of an internal memo that was obtained by that said organization. Also, it instructs reporters not to use the word Palestine except in very rare cases and to steer clear of the term refugee camps to describe areas of Gaza who are historically settled by displaced Palestinians. Do you feel that the international media bending and changing narratives uh, will continue uh, to go on to suit the Israeli perspective? For uh, having me, I'll briefly comment on the sanctions part and then I will uh, detail discuss about the your questions about the uh, media narratives you know the sanctions are i think one of the easiest part uh, to implement and uh, rather than sending soldiers or sending bombs you actually you know go into the uh, just economic uh, have a meeting with the uh, international uh, world economic system and ultimately implement sanctions but you know uh, the sanctions is uh, one of the thing that actually affect the middle class and the poor uh, of the Iranian people, especially the small and medium industries uh, enterprises, and the uh, you know the effect that actually feels is primarily by the uh, Iranian people. Uh, these kind of the sanctions that today have been announced are primarily against the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and the Quds Force uh, that are uh, primarily in the Middle Eastern region, especially in Syria and Iraq. Uh, but uh, again, the trickle-down effect will directly come towards the Iranian people and especially the poor, uh, who are uh, being affected for over decades, uh, as highlighted by my uh, panelist as well. Uh, now, coming towards your media narrative thing, you know, uh, the issue is that uh, the, uh, the overall uh, Western media has been uh, one way or the other uh, been over the years been sympathetic towards Israel and towards the Jewish lobbies. Uh, even in uh, America currently, uh, you will see that uh, the Iranian, the, uh, the Jewish lobby is quite strong. And uh, this is the election year in the U.S. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, the Donald Trump has also uh, uh, given a statement regarding the Israel attack and Iranian retaliation. So, uh, in this context, I think that the uh, media narrative is primarily shifted towards, uh, uh, tilted towards Israel and uh, uh, pro providing them some kind of a, a legitimacy uh, and, and, and trying to uh, bring up a, a soft narrative for Israel. And this is, I think, uh, uh, the perception management is something uh, which actually ultimately ends up uh, being, uh, uh, being uh, portraying the uh, Iran as a terrorist, but Israel as a, uh, as a defending country or defending nation. If you look at the 7th October attack, you will find out that the uh, overall Western media is still uh, focusing on the 7th October attack of Hamas on Israel. But uh, subsequently, it actually tries to skip 
the atrocities that Israel has taken so far, uh, which has killed over 33,000 people and more than 76,000 uh, the uh, people have been injured. And, and, and the most important point is about the humanitarian aid that is still being blocked by Israel uh, on, on the borders. And, and the people of Gaza are still uh, in a position where they cannot actually access to the basic uh, basic human needs like uh, like medicines, like food, like shelter. So media perception is quite important. I was uh, last week I was in uh, Middle East and I found that majority of the Western uh, uh, scholars are still considering that the uh, the people who are uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 feel, feeling the brunt in Gaza, uh, they are the responsibles. And I and I uh, and I asked that how how is it possible? And they said that our media has convinced in the society in the Western society that uh, the uh, overall Gaza and and the people 2.2 million people are responsible for everything. So somehow media has uh, in the West has managed uh, to provide uh, some kind of a cover. Uh, to Israel to uh, continue with its atrocities. Uh, to, yes. uh, I will add uh, a few points to it. Uh, number one, uh, when Israel attacked on uh, Iranian consulate uh, in Damascus, mm. it took uh, 13 lives. Mm. When Iran retaliated, it did not take any life uh, of the Israelis. Mm. Now, the media or the entire world know that uh, what has done uh, by uh, Israel and by Iran. Mm. Iranian uh, I mean calculation could have been uh, towards Iranian uh, citizens or Iranian military or any other place where they can also take life. Uh, but they did not take li lives of the Israelis. So the people that, uh, in the world, entire world, they know. And the uh, um, American media also know what is the reality. One. Number two is I have written a book on role of American media post 9-11 in 2005. In that book, I have portrayed uh, American media's stature or the way American media works or the way it portrays the picture and the way the establishment, establishment of uh, 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 America uh, penetrates in uh, American media and uh, min, uh, uh, maneuver the things. The same way now they are doing in the Middle Eastern war. Uh, I don't think that that media would be in the position to, to just give that fake I mean, um, impression, which mm. is not on the ground. Mm. Uh, the entire world, the, the, the Western world in particular, and uh, the Israeli, uh, uh, Israelis they themselves, they know what is the reality. Mm. Uh, the aggression shown by the Israelis against uh, Netanyahu uh, in Israel uh, is uh, uh, a certificate of the truth of the, the, the Muslim world or the Palestinian conditions and is uh, the negation and uh, rejection of Israel and America and Great Britain whatsoever they have been doing in Middle East since right. October 7. All right. Khurab, uh, coming to tomorrow where the United Nations Security Council is to vote on whether Palestine should become a full member of the United Nations as well. There is a huge chance it is going to be vetoed by the US as per many of the quarters are already saying. What impact, negative or positive, is it going to have whether Palestine becomes a member or does not become the member? What are the advantages that Palestine could have if it does become one? You know, uh, the most likely part is that the U.S. might go for veto uh, the resolution. So uh, this means that, uh, you know, uh, the this act of the U.S. will further expose U.S. in front of the international community and especially in the Islamic world, that how uh, how U.S. is, uh, you know, uh, providing shelter to the Israeli uh, uh, regime as well. And now, uh, if you look at throughout uh, 7 October and onwards, you have seen that uh, is, uh, Israel has been provided significant uh, economic as well as political support by uh, US. Even uh, in last six or seven, uh, four, six months, you have seen that uh, US has already vetoed uh, several such kind of attempts uh, in United Nations Security Council. And uh, this shows that the uh, there is a consistent approach of the US 
to support Israel. And this is primarily based on the two uh, considerations. The first is the compulsion in the domestic side. The domestic political compulsion is that uh, this is the election year, so uh, every uh, candidate is trying to uh, showcase its uh, support uh, to the uh, Israel and towards the Jewish lobby. And even in the you know in strategic domain, there is also compulsion because uh, U.S. is uh, bound uh, to uh, 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 U.S. is bound because of the security agreements that it has signed with the Israel uh, over the past few decades. So uh, it, it is definitely supporting Israel, and it is it will likely veto uh, uh, tomorrow's the uh, uh, resolution and will uh, again uh, uh, you know send a signal that it is supporting Israel uh, come what may. Thank you so very much, uh, Khuram, to have joined us uh, for this very important segment. We have so many other questions to uh, ask. Nevertheless, we are a bit short of time because of the duration of the show. But nevertheless, we'll come back to you to discuss more on this ongoing uh, conflict. Day 195, ladies and gentlemen, and it doesn't seem as if it's going to end anytime. Another thing that perturbs uh, the region also is uh, the hegemonic designs of India. Now that the elections in India are going to happen starting from tomorrow and this is going, they are going to go on for a couple of weeks time because it's a huge, huge country and the number of voters are around 1.4 billion. There are a lot of designs that we are seeing and a lot of maneuvering that has been seen by the BJP's government in order to curtail or demean the opposition by any means possible and to continue to uh, occupy politically and administratively almost all parts of India. Will they succeed after these elections? A lot of people say they will and that in the Modi will come back to power for a third time, but there are a lot of skeptics as well who discuss different angles of this uh, on the electioneering that is going on in India when the elections are starting from tomorrow. We've been joined by two guests. Uh, Naveed Aman Khan continues to join us uh, for this segment as well and we've also been joined by Sundas Malik. She's a member of Special Committee on Kashmir. Sundas, thank you very much to have joined us and we'll begin with you. Manipur. Uh, is uh, quite just a day before the elections begin. A lot of people are very wary on how uh, these are going to go. We all know about the Mete and the Kuki uh, conflict that has engulfed uh, Manipur. And uh, we all know that the government sides with one and does not with the other and therefore is empowering one of the two communities. The deliberate or non-deliberate attempt, attempt uh, to uh, not control violence in Manipur Will it have effects on the political landscape of the region and other regions nearby? And is this fear going to be used to garner more votes for the BJP? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim Thank you for having me firstly. Uh, I'd like to begin by saying that uh, we sit on the brink of India entering the Kal Yog or the dark ages, I think, of its democracy now. Uh, so let me begin my mm. statement by saying that. As far as Manipur's uh, state is concerned, I think it's one of the first states which will start its vote um, and it will continue to happen for the next uh, couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, but I think what the BJP government is banking on primarily is that level of intimidation and that level of coercion or that level of fear and threat uh, that they have uh, sort of uh, relayed to the people of uh, Manipur, especially the Kuki tribe and the Methi tribe, mm. through uh, sort of um, giving them the ways and means and the opportunity to suppress a class and let them know that as long as you are a BJP member, mm. as long as you are part of the upper echelons of the Indian society, you will be able to suppress any minority according mm. to your whim. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a human rights issue or whether it is a human rights atrocity because as far as uh, the prime minister himself or the people governing them uh, are concerned it, it's really a non-issue for them because mm. that's how they have shown it to the world Modi has not spoken once about what happened in Manipur he has not actually addressed what is going on with the minorities within mm. India so I think it is a non-issue for them and they are banking on this authoritarian uh, sort of uh, legacy that they have created over 10 years and that th they know that any dissent will be met with harsh punishment. So uh, any dissent is not an issue at the moment for them. All right, Naveed Saab also 
969 million eligible voters in India for the elections that begin tomorrow, more than 10 percent of the world's population. They represent the largest electorate anywhere in the world and will include 18 million first time voters. More than <coughs> 2,600 political parties are registered in this election, but it seems uh, by the way the maneuvering has been going on that it's going to be BJP that will get a lot of votes this time as well. At the same time, the Congress and other opposition parties are leveling allegations on the BJP government of, for example, tax terrorism, match fixing and what not. If things are so apparent, do you think it is going to change voter perspective? It may, because it depends upon the way Congress and the other parties portray the picture of BJP uh, to their voters or to the Indians. Uh, the important thing is this, that uh, very successfully uh, Moody in uh, during last 10 years have portrayed uh, that uh, uh, he believes in Hindutva and he promotes Hindutva and he uh, he believes that uh, the uh, minorities have no right to live within India. Uh, he believes that it is not India, it is Hindustan. Mm. So Hindustan means the country or the land for the Hindus. Uh, the other uh, minorities like the, the Sikhs, the Muslims, the Parsis, the Christians, uh, uh, all of them, they have no right to live within India. Mm -hmm. It is a, this myth will create a serious problem for India mm -hmm. and it will further divide India into different parts mm -hmm. because every um, uh, minority has a right to um, uh, safeguard its uh, I mean, uh, fundamental rights and for the fundamental rights all the uh, uh, minorities are struggling and they are uh, in the streets like Khalistan is uh, you know uh, on very high uh, I mean, mod uh, in the entire world now that move cannot be suppressed any longer uh, the, the only way to suppress these or to uh, to diminish all these uh, moves or um, I mean uh, responses from the minorities is to give complete right to every that fundamental right which is given to the Hindus mm -hmm. should be given to the uh, minorities. But Navisa, we India. don't see that happening, do we? We haven't yes, seen that it, happening it, it, in it the last two uh, stints of Narendra Modi it, and with, there's going to be no it, it change will this never time. Happen. If but does this is what I'm saying, it should be hmm. if India okay. wants to be a one, one country hmm. uh, in future. Hmm. But uh, if uh, um, uh, Modi continues hmm. for the third time, hmm. India will be divided. Right. And India will be facing more problems within India hmm. and will be pro uh, creating problem for the uh, neighboring countries as well because hmm. he, he believes in creating that problem for hmm. the neighboring countries as well. All right. This vision of utopia, Sundas, this vision of the mother of democracy as portrayed by Narendra Modi or what is pluralism or democracy. I mean, these are just facades now and everybody knows that, even the West knows that, that is openly supporting India for whichever reasons it is. Let's talk a little bit about Modi. He calls the Indian people the Modi ka parivar, the family of yes. Narendra Modi. He, uh, he has a radio show that comes every week. It's called Man Ki Baat, where he talks to ordinary people about their issues. Then, of course, his face is plastered uh, on billboards across the country on COVID vaccine certificates, on the welfare schemes introduced by the government that are named after him. He has also made strategic use of the media to build up the myth around his party and around himself as well. Have these tactics materialized Narendra Modi's win? Are these legally justified means for electioneering? Um, well, um, as far as Modi is concerned, there's a, there's a me Modi hai to mumkin hai. Hmm. So I think anything is possible hmm. with Modi and BJP hmm. as far as their actions are concerned. As far as this rosy picture that Modi has presented over the past decade and how they have shown recently their government released a white paper which showed the you know new Bharat and hmm. how it is you know growing day by day in strength and uh, in economy and uh, hmm. all those things. Well, the Congress party released the black paper hmm. which showed that in the past decade uh, unemployment has risen to 45 percent and in, uh, uh, sorry in the past 10 years uh, unemployment has is being the highest it has been in the past 45 years mm. there are 80 crore Modi ka parivar members 
currently on food programs because they don't have enough means to attain food by themselves. So Modi ka parivar, I think, as far as, uh, as that uh, reality is concerned, is only limited to the Ambani's and the Adani's and the Tata's and the top 5% of India. As far as the rest of the people are concerned, I must give it to Modi and his you know, team of narrative builders, uh, such as Arnab Goswami and Rubika Liaquat. And oh, oh, I, I, I now see all of Indian media as far as the news media and the Bollywood uh, uh, medium is concerned, all succumbing to King Modi, as mm. uh, we now mm. see him. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the, these members, either through intimidation or through uh, this, you know, this need to be on the side of someone who is winning and who is powerful and who will ensure that the ED department or the CBI doesn't mm -hmm. raid their house anytime soon. I think all those people actually deep down know the reality of what India has become. Mm. Uh, it is no democracy. It Rahul is a reign through fear. Yes, and Rahul Gandhi can shout it out loud mm -hmm. and proud that it is no longer a democracy. Mm -hmm. But uh, a Kashmiri would probably argue that it was never a democracy. Mm -hmm. The CBI is only now raiding their houses. They have been raiding houses of, uh, you know, Kashmiri leadership for a long time. The police is only now involved in their day-to-day -day lives. The police has been the part of the occupied Kashmiri's day-to-day -day life for 75 years. So they are just uh, is suffering from mm -hmm. this disease of subjective mm. uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, moralism uh, because it is immoral when it is done to them but it is completely moral when it is done to an oppressed class such as the Muslims and the uh, Sikhs and the mm. Christians. So I think this reign of terror, uh, as I said before, we're sitting at the brink of the beginning of the real reign of mm. terror mm. because mm. when Modi comes in for the third time, there has been a consistent increment of extremist views that have been cultivated over this past decade within the Indian populace. So we know that they, these views will translate into something catastrophical for the Indian uh, people themselves. I agree uh, with uh, the fellow guest when he says that inwardly, India is the biggest threat to itself. No other country, but as far as Pakistan is concerned, as far as Bangladesh is concerned, as far as all other countries or neighbors of India are concerned, mm. we fairly understand what this narrative and what this agenda looks like. Mm. You know, when they're attacking people uh, in our country and uh, then creating these narratives about our countries as being suppressed and communal. Whereas India, the, you know, Akhand Bharat ideology mm -hmm. is, I think, the greatest fear of terrorism in Southeast Asia at the moment. Mm -hmm. And they've completed, uh, you know, el eluded that. They don't want to discuss that. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they, it'll come to their doorstep pretty soon. All right. Uh, so and one thing uh, they'll which have to face it. Yes. yes. One thing which I would like to mm -hmm. add uh, with Sundas is that uh, uh, in uh, India under Moody, mm -hmm. during the last 10 years, have uh, um, uh, charted out a new um, design of international terrorism hmm. uh, under that raw, hmm. uh, sponsored by raw in different countries. Hmm. And Pakistan again is and a raw is state. directly under control of Narendra Modi. Th yes, definitely. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, hmm. he, he is the perpetrator. Hmm. He is the patronizer. Hmm. So that raw is working under Modi. Modi has given that design to raw to, um, I mean, accumulate all this within Pakistan in particular. And Pakistan again is the worst hit. A terrorism country by India and all those target killings which have been carried on in uh, during the last couple of years in Pakistan are the number is more than 20 hmm. the highest number of target killing in the entire world hmm. one incident ha happened in uh, Canada the other in America hmm. one in Czech Republic hmm. the others in different different countries but the 20 number is the largest number hmm. so Pakistan will be uh, again feeling more trouble if Modi again comes in uh, power and uh, but uh, uh, the all is, is looking at the when we look at things they are all pointing towards Narendra Modi's third stint in power this, this is what he has been successfully portraying in, uh, in the minds of Hindus in mm. of, of India. Mm. That if you bring me, I'll crush everybody in the world, mm. especially the neighbors, especially Pakistan. But you know, that is uh, the whole concept of a yes, yes, yes. This, this is what yes. he has been selling right. to, to Hindus. So, in this, uh, I'll couple a lot of questions together because there are so many different points, and we have, we, you know, we always are short of time. Erosion of media freedom. 
uh, no independence of the judiciary, the judiciary openly siding with the election the, commission, the Modi, um, yes. election commission yes. as well. And you know, all the different impartiality, impartiality of the voting process that is also under question. The whole uh, you know, uh, electronic voting machines scandal as well on how that is also going to be manipulated during these elections as well. Then the uh, uh, uniform civil code across the country yes. that uh, Narendra Modi is supposed to implement once he comes into power. And the most important and the most disturbing of it all is what he has said very openly that if he gets 400 seats, he is going to change the constitution yes. of India. And Rahul Gandhi says, if the Indian constitution is changed, it is the end of India. Yes. What's your comment on all of that? Well, I agree with Rahul Gandhi as much as I hate to admit that, uh, <laughs> but uh, I agree with him and I, um, I, I don't want, want to sound sadistic in a, any manner, but I hope that happens. Why? Because then finally we can get rid of this continuous narrative and propaganda of India being a secular democracy. Because then we would outright know mm. that it is a dictatorship ruled by elite Hindu extremists and everybody else is a non-human. There will be no article 14 and 15. Then mm. we would know that there are no human rights. Mm. Then they cannot hide behind those laws mm. uh, to counter Amnesty International or Human Rights Watch or United Nations and say that these are internal matters, mm. so to say. So I think uh, it should happen. Uh, unfortunately, because India, like I, uh, I've said before, it's it's like it's like a mad dog loose uh, mm. in a neighborhood. Every single person it comes across, it is a threat to. If the U.S. thinks India is not a threat to them, they are mistaken. If mm. Europeans think India is not a threat to them, th remember, a Khan Bharat extends all the way to Germany. Mm. So, th 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 this is not coming to an end. Maybe they'll reach out from here and then go around from this side to mm. uh, maybe claim Hawaii as a part of, <laughs> you know, uh, a Khan Bharat uh, from ages ago. Mm. So, I think the, these expansionist and extremist ideologies, th th we, we see them coming to fruition now in India and Modi's and with promises. And the complicity of all the organizations. And, and yes, let me, let me also uh, mention this. As far as the Indian Supreme Court is concerned, as far as the Indian judiciary is concerned, we have got former judiciary members who say that we align with BJP's ideology and mm. that is the reason we are leaving our, so <laughs> to say, positions <laughs> in order to be more productive member uh, of uh, the society. So uh, we, we see this translation through and through we don't need any sort of you know covert messages to understand what is going on in india they're outright com uh, outrightly coming uh, out as bhagwa terrorists they're mm. saying we are going to establish this land without any other minority without interference from anyone else so i think the, uh, the, the, their masters or generals who who claim that india is a land of peace and who get this g20 you know um, uh, welcomes uh, with covered uh, you know sort mm. of areas they need to understand that behind those covers lurks the dark reality of india and it should shiver anyone in their boots if mm. they understand what is going on in india and how it is uh, sort of an implosion waiting to happen. Mm. Umar, one yes. thing uh, uh, mm. which is very important and interestingly uh, is said that that mad dog is now freed and that freed or, uh, or set freed to, to, towards Pakistan or toward uh, you know human beings. If a mad dog is freed to, towards Pakistan once again in future, the only treatment for the mad dog is to shoot the mad dog mm. so that to protect the human beings from that the the, mm. uh, the 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 cruelty of that mad dog so i think that mad dog will be will be shot down uh, if, if oh, you but for Narendra Modi, the, that perspective is for the minorities yeah. and for yes. all those <laughs> leaders of uh, Kashmir who are trying to raise their voice for a plebiscite for the genuine rights of the Kashmiri people or for the Muslims or for the Sikhs or for the Christians, for the Dalits and the list goes on and on. Well, we can always hope somebody explodes uh, oil in India and then uh, US will be right there spreading the seed of new democracy hmm. within <laughs> India. So <laughs> <That> one can <laughs> always hope. Okay. Yes. What, 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 what about the scandal of the electoral bonds, the 30 thousand crore rupees will that also prove to be detrimental or in any way possible for the bjp government or is, is it also going to be you know put under the rug well there uh, the, the, the I think the main narrative to uh, or their answer to every single uh, question con 
uh, sort of considering electoral bonds or corruption or intimidation through PMLA or anything is that this is under investigation. Mm. So it will be investigated mm. and uh, eventually every single uh, lip service henchman of BJP will come out and say there was an investigation mm. and they did not find anything just mm. like the Gujarat massacre investigation, just like the Babri uh, mosque uh, investigation. There have been so many investigations mm. and reports mm. and some of them have uh, argued that these institutions have in the past even before Modi came into power have been used against minorities no, now the only problem is it is being used against uh, almost 64 percent of the population wh uh, wh which involves the uh, uh, lower and the uh, middle class so uh, I think it, it is only going to grow uh, and you'll you need to I think after the CEA there will be a Hindutva act with in which you'll have to sign that I am an extremist expansionist Hindu otherwise mm. I have and no I believe right in all the policies of EJP yes. and if you don't then you are Khalid. put aside. Khalid yes, Khalid yes. I want to talk about the mm. uh, minorities, mm. even the Hindu leaders, uh, you know, um, the, uh, the state of Kajriwal, mm. uh, what happened with Kajriwal? He was arrested um, uh, just before the election. He's still behind yes, bar. Yes, and he is still behind bar and yes. uh, uh, different uh, FIRs are uh, you know, registered against him. Mm. That those. Uh, are based on Not corruption, the only leader on, who's on corruption you know yeah. and he is a clean man and he is the first threat political threat to Modi hmm. so uh, he, he Modi tried to portray his picture as a corrupt man but he is a clean man I say he is the best uh, politician of uh, uh, India who is uh, you know uh, I mean uh, a clear threat to hmm. uh, Modi that is so true. But you know, the way things are going and the way this whole maneuvering or uh, machineering is going on, I mean, I can only foresee Narendra Modi's thirst in power yes. and the constitution being changed if he gets the requisite seats. And as you said, a rule of the elite right wing extremist Hindu families along with Narendra Modi yes. and his BJP and RSS philosophy kroners who also follow him blindly wherever he goes and whatever he does. Unfortunate, so unfortunate for a country that had a bright future future with such a lot of different sects and communities and religions thriving uh, uh, under its uh, umbrella. But now, unfortunately, the whole situation has gone a whole 180 degrees. Thank yes. you very much, Sundas Malik. Thank you very much, Naveed Amant Khan to have joined us. Let's come to our last three stories very, very quickly. The first, of course, the rains, the floods that have battered uh, Oman, the UAE as well. 20 uh, people have been uh, killed at least. And of course, uh, um, the majority of the people who've been killed are in Oman. And uh, there is one casualty in the UAE, but there have been injured. There are two missing persons in Oman as well. Uh, Dubai is, we all know, situated on the coast of the UAE, usually very dry, but it receives less than 100 millimeters a year of rainfall on average. It does experience extreme downpours. But this, what has happened in the last few days, is um, a lot of people are attributing it to climate change and the effects of climate change. Uh, we will see what will be the reasons, as the investigation also might reveal other things. Uh, there were a lot of uh, other possibilities that had been put forward as the, uh, the artificial form of for creating rain in the area which has been negated by the UAE government as well but uh, you know flood waters have been raging through the streets through the malls through the airports of the UAE and that is what is causing discomfort not only to a lot of people but also to uh, uh, of course uh, a lot of uh, commuters who are going through Dubai to other countries to and fro. Then we are going to talk about a volcano that has erupted in Indonesia the alert level has been raised to its highest it has erupted several times uh, on Wednesday. This is uh, in Indonesia's outermost uh, region and authorities have, as I have said, raised the level, the uh, threat level to the highest level. And of course, a lot of people are evacuating, have been told to evacuate from the uh, regions that could be affected by the volcano. Uh, the volcano it has a peak of 725 meters above sea level and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, has been erupting since Wednesday. Could create havoc for the region. Uh, uh, authorities have also widened a four kilometer exclusion zone to six kilometers uh, evening around the crater as well. We wish uh, that Indonesia manages to uh, curtail this and of course manage its uh, uh, populace uh, in this whole calamity that has engulfed it. Finally, the Brazilian police have uh, detained a woman who is suspected of taking a dead man to withdraw a bank loan. Now this video that you can see in which the, the image of the elderly has has been concealed uh, w uh, was uh, uh, of a video taken by uh, uh, an attendee at a bank 
while uh, this woman was apparently trying to uh, sign uh, or make this elderly person sign uh, a paper for a $3,000 loan. But the fact is that that person was already dead. And when they saw that there was no reaction from that person, uh, the uh, police of uh, the end, of course, the hospital staff were called and then they proclaimed him dead, not since uh, the moment he had entered, but since the last few hours, which the family of the woman, of course, negates and say that she, uh, they, uh, she has passed in the bank and not uh, uh, before that. Whether it becomes a scandal uh, that is of mo monetary nature or any other scandal only time will tell but of course uh, a lot of speculation remains the investigation is ongoing this brings us ladies and gentlemen to the end of today's show we'll see you inshallah tomorrow with new stories and segments that pertain to us you in pakistan stay safe allah Hafiz.